Hello, and welcome to the Mancore podcast. The Mancore is a community that focuses on topics in the areas of masculinity, physical and emotional fitness, and relationships. The Mancore was created for one simple purpose, to offer a community for men seeking their deepest purpose and their greatest potential. Today, we sit down with a very good friend of mine, Mr. Dr. Jack Bielitz. Jack has been a chiropractor here in the Omaha area for over 25 years, and I first met him back in 2016 when I discovered that he was the only one in the Omaha area who offered network chiropractic care. Every time that I've ever gone in and seen Jack, I always appreciate it, my visit. I can tell a difference, and I always walk away with some sort of benefit, be it mental, physical, emotional. It's always an uplifting conversation. I'm always in a much better place when I've been regular with my visits with him. In today's conversation, we talk about his evolution into becoming a chiropractor, opening up and the running of his business for over 25 years. We talk about the difference between regular chiropractic care and network chiropractic care or network spinal analysis. We talk about the different kinds of stress, be they chemical, mental, physical, or emotional stress. We also discuss his recommendations around testosterone, if you have questions or if it's something that you're interested in looking at as a man. And he also has a very special offer for anybody who discovers or finds out about his work through the Mancore podcast. So make sure that you pay attention to the end of the episode where he has a very special offer for those who have discovered him through the podcast today. Can't wait for you to discover all the great benefits and all the cool stuff that Jack does. And I hope that you will pay him a visit after hearing his story here today. Jack, how are you today? Good. Good good to see you, Aaron. Uh, Likewise, man. So you are a a chiropractor here in Omaha and you've been doing that for how long now? Uh, A little over 25 years. Jesus, man. Yeah. Um, You've been in the game for a while, running a, a successful business here, which we're at today. I always love coming here. This is such a a relaxing place. Um, And you really do care about the people that come in here. I genuinely, like I personally can attest to that. So um, it's always a treat. I wondered if you could jump right in and talk about your journey to becoming a chiropractor, you know, the events in your life that led up to it, where you went to school, um, getting into the business that you've had for such a long time. Um, You know, I I grew up um, with my eyes completely focused on being a dentist because that was my, what my dad was. And um, somewhere along the way, um, about midway through college, I kind of decided, you know, uh, maybe shift my ideas a little bit and went to law school. And uh, as I was in law school, it just wasn't right. And so I backed out of that about halfway through and uh, was uh, just doing some trading of commodities and uh, actually got in a car accident. And um it just like, wow, you know, it was just there. Um, you know, when I was studying to be a dentist and or kind of being groomed to be a dentist, you know, I was in the lab, I was doing all kinds of stuff and it was great. It was fun doing that stuff, but it just never, I never felt the passion for it. Sure. And same thing when I was in law school, it was just like it, their passion just wasn't there. And I was just, as soon as I got out of that first visit, um, and I only went two visits to this guy, um, after my accident, but it was just, there was something inside of me that moved me. And, um, it was just kind of the start of this journey. Yeah. Yeah. So you had, uh, you had a car accident. Um, very, you... very minor one. Okay. Yeah. Okay. What, what was going on physically with you and, and what changed after you, you met with him? It was just a, it was very simple. You know, I had some headaches that weren't going away. My dad sent me to one of his friends and literally it was a one visit. And I was just like, wow, this is, what I want to do. And I went one more time to the guy and, um, you know, it, it was just, it, 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 there was just something about that. Mo- I didn't know what people did. I didn't know how they did it. Um, he did twist and crack my neck and I hated that, which is like really weird because I just knew that was the right thing to do, but I didn't know that I, I knew I would never want to do that to somebody else. So it was just a really, I, I, I completely give all the credit to God moving my soul because 
you know, to to start on a journey like that and realize that there's nothing about that visit that you would want to do yourself, but you still wanted to go to the profession. Um, it was just there. And so, you know, as I was going through school, I was always looking for what are the alternatives? What's going on? And the thing about chiropractic is there's so much diversity. I mean, sure, there are plenty of guys out there that, you know, will crack and pop and whatever, and they get amazing results. Um, you know, people all over the world get help by that. But if you want to step beyond that, if you want to go and delve deeper, there are just some um, some avenues that will just take you to places that you can't even dream possible because you don't even realize they're there. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so how old were you when, when that happened? Um, Do you remember? Mid twenties or mid to late twenties. Sure. So, okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. So, you know, you, the business has been going now for 25 years. Um, we know where it started, you know, what led you to into the work. At some point you transitioned from the standard chiropractic care into more of the network chiropractic care, which is why I came to see you. Um, what, for those that don't know what net, network chiropractic care is or NSA as they may see it, um, what is it? Okay. So, all of chiropractic is based on the idea that your body has this amazing healing power inside of it. Um, and it's called innate intelligence. It's just one of the words for it. But basically, the way that that works is that innate intelligence has to direct everything going on in the body. And it does that through the nervous system. And so if, you know, you want to move your hand or if you want to your heart to beat or if you want to take a breath or if you want to heal a cut there have to be tons and tons of signals all throughout the body to get even the smallest thing accomplished and that relies heavily on that communication system because without that communication system you know nothing can happen and so what chiropractic is all about is opening up those nerves and letting the body heal itself because one of, the, of our principles is that just about anything that's going wrong with the body can be healed by the body as long as everything is set up to allow that to happen. And so, you know, like for instance, if you go into a chiropractor with a really severe back pain and maybe he cracks your back, you've probably seen that on a movie or a TV or maybe experienced it yourself. A lot of people think, well, that pop that I heard, that must have moved those bones and got them in a line and that's why I feel better. And it's not necessarily the alignment of the bones that makes you feel better. It's because the bones are aligned, it takes the pressure off of the nerves and that opens up that body's ability to find all the inflammation and bring all the healing to that area that needs to happen in order for the body to feel better. And so that's a, that's a really big distinction. And there's a lot of different ways. So yes, crack, cracking is one way to do that. But um, network kind of takes things to a different level. Um, it's more about the whole body and the energy flowing through it. And a lot of it is based upon how, um, how your past events in your life have led up to where you are now. Because everything that's happened to you in your past is, where, is why you are where you are right now. So, you know, let's kind of take, for instance, you know, something that people of your listeners, you know, might really be interested in. So self-esteem, self-confidence, that ability to go up and talk to a woman or talk to your boss or talk to a, uh, a potential uh, customer, you know, a, a lot of times people struggle with that a little bit. And it's not necessarily, I mean, a lot of times we think about, well, personality type, and whatever, but a lot of times it goes way deeper than that. And so what you have to understand is that your body has two modes of existing. You've got one that's made for when you're relaxed and um, basically the healing part. And then you've got one for when you're stressed out. So you should live most of your life in that relaxed area. Um, Basically, though, you know, like for instance, a kid that's going to school, if they're relaxed, 
they're able to open up their mind. And when they're relaxed, their brain is open and it's, it's taking in everything and you're really processing stuff. And while you're doing that, your body is relaxing. And when you go to bed, you're able just to kind of close your eyes and allow your body to relax and drift off to sleep very easily. So it, it, that's a very big part of your life. Um, the other part is called the sympathetic system. All right. That's the fight or flight mode. So you have to remember that our bodies were made for back in the caveman days. And back then, if you had a major stress in your life, a stress that was pretty powerful, it was probably life threatening. All right. So either there was some animal that was threatening yourself Another tribe was going to take over your village. Maybe you had famine and there was nothing to eat. You know, all of these things were very stressful and they would put you into that sympathetic overdrive mode. And so what happens in this mode is a lot of things steer up. Uh, when that sympathetic brain takes over, um, the blood that goes to the uh, intestines and that part of your body that, you know, used, used for digestion, it shuts that down so that all the blood can be moved to your arms and legs so that you can fight off whatever's there or you can run as fast as you can to get off, all right? This sympathetic system is why our species survived back, you know, up until this time because we were able to do that. We could shunt to this energy. Also, our brains change. So in, in, instead of just taking in everything and just being very relaxed, it all of a sudden goes into hyper alert mode and you're instantly and immediately analyzing the entire um, environment that you're in. Where are my avenues of, of escape? Where can I, what can I use as a weapon? I mean, your brain is just going here and here, 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 and just always trying to, you know, figure that out. And for short bursts, that's exactly what that sympathetic system was there for. The problem is, is that stress is so much different today. And the thing that you want to understand is that there are three different types of stress. We have physical stress, chemical stress, and mental emotional stress. So physical stress um, is the different things that you've done in your life to um, hurt yourself. So, you know, maybe when you were being born, uh, maybe the doctor had to pull on your neck, either with a vacuum or forceps or whatever. That's a huge pressure on the neck. Um, as you're, you know, a baby, you know, the head's kind of flopping around. And if you weren't, you know, really held correctly, that can put some stress that stays with you. As you're growing up, you know, you're falling, you know, just learning to walk or when you're more, a little bit older, you're falling out of trees, off of bikes. All of those have impacts that, you know, some of them will figure themselves out and, you know, you can do stuff and, and, and whatever and in your body. Re but some of those things stay with you. Um, and then as you get older, you're into sports, you know, and so if you wrestling or football or quite frankly, even tennis, if you, you know, fall hard enough or run against a fence or whatever, I mean, it doesn't have to be the heavy duty, what we call contact sports to have a really major impact. Um, but anyway, all of those things create potential stresses in your body. Then you've got the chemical stress. So a lot of people think, well, gosh, how much chemical stress can I have? Well, you know, do you live in a house that has been, you know, uh, sprayed for insecticide? Do Does your lawn care people uh, spray for, um, you know, weeds and stuff like that? Uh, how good is your diet? You know, are you getting the important things that you should be in your diet so your body has all the nutrition. You know, all these little things. And again, none of these by themselves are going to be enough to push you over, but they all start adding up. And then, of course, mental emotional stress. So, you know, relationship stress, job stress. Um, you know, do you have kids? I mean, raising a family can be a huge stress. Parents, you know, sisters, grandparents, whatever. All of this stuff, you know, creates little stresses. And the thing that magnifies it in our society is our phones and our TVs. We get more possibilities for increased stress than we ever have in a human existence. And so, you know, we find out what's happening overseas in an instant. We, you know, have a sister who may have moved to Michigan, but yet we know that the major problems that are there just by a phone call or even a text, you know, so huge stress starts to build up and it's easy it's easier now today than ever before 
to put you over that threshold and put you into that sympathetic overdrive. So, you know, what does that look like for a, an adult? You know, it starts to impact that nervous system because that stress starts building up. That sympathetic overdrive takes over. So people might have digestive issues. You know, they might have upset stomachs a lot. Um, they could have heart conditions. Uh, they might feel very nervous all the time. You know, their body's doing things. Also, also, the way you think about stuff. Are you sitting there putting out fires in your brain or are you stepping back and seeing the big picture in life about everything? And so if you're just sitting there uh, putting out fires, your mind is racing all the time. And how can you, you know, sit there and have confidence and sit there and, and think straight when you're trying to sell somebody if your mind is racing all the time? And so that is the big problem that we suffer in today is the amount of stress that is just integral into our lives. Yeah. Yeah. You, I mean, you, you basically covered everything there too. And I love that you added that, you know, the, the instant gratification of the technology has a, such a huge impact in it because the stuff that we didn't really give a shit about 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago is constantly, we're berated by it. There's a constant stream of it in everywhere we look. Right? Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, if you, if your family member moved out of town, it's like, well, out of sight, out of mind, you know, you didn't even think about them. You cared about them. Mm -hmm. You didn't really necessarily think about them every day. But now we've got all that. Same thing what's you know happening overseas. We see what's going on on the political screen. We see what's going on and we have like um, Facebook and YouTube f you know filling our brains with one side or the other, creating emotional disturbance, you know, because we want to get you emotional about this candidate or that candidate or whatever. And they try to bring up those emotions, which then pushes you even closer to that threshold of stress, even if you're not big into politics, it can be a factor of, you know, that can maybe be that straw that broke the camel's back. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so this stuff all gets locked in your nervous system. All the stress that you mentioned, the physical, the chemical, the mental, emotional. Now, when it gets locked in there, what is that preventing the body from doing? Basically, what it does is it starts impact or it creates a state that we call subluxation. In other words, there is a problem with the way the nerves are functioning. Now, the problem with diagnosing that is that you literally have billions of nerves in the body and no two people are going to have the same nerve set um, affected by that. You know, that, that stress can come from anywhere along there and affect any of the nerves. And so even though it all relates back to stress and the, and the nervous system shutting down, you've got some people that have digestive issues, some people that have heart issues, some people that have adrenal issues, some people that, you know, are just constantly sick. They, you know, get over one cold and they start another, get over that cold, start another. Um, you know, we see that quite frankly, even in infants. I mean, there are kids that ear infection after ear infection after ear infection, I've, I had a kid that was here four or five weeks ago now, four rounds of antibiotics by the age of two. Jesus. You know, and finally somebody told the parent, hey, take the kid in to see a chiropractor. And they were just like, what the heck would I do that for? But after four rounds, it's like, well, gosh, I'm going to do something. So let me try this. Right. And so we worked for this kid for about three weeks and the ear infections really started to like, it was, it was calm and they had an ENT appointment just kind of already scheduled. And this doctor goes in and says, this is the first time I have ever examined this kid. And there was no fluid in the kid's ear. Wow. You know, no medications, no, nothing like that. Just opening up those nerves, taking some of the stress off of that. And think about it, you know, how much stress could that kid have had? But it was a pretty traumatic birth. I mean, there was like 25, 30 hours of labor, you know, um, and you know, then you've got stressed out parents holding this kid. They can absorb some of that stress. And so that kid was literally all stressed out, keeping the nerves from getting that proper, uh, innervation to those ears because, you know, what is an, a virus or a, uh, a, um, a bacteria? You know, it's just another thing that the body has to fight. 
And as long as that immune system is up and running, it can adapt. But that kid wasn't able to adapt because they were sitting in that fight or flight mode. And when you're in that fight or flight mode, you can't adapt. You're just sitting there on purpose. And that's why the more you can get into that relaxed mode, the better your brain is going to function for you to, you know, heal things, to, you know, think clearly when you're talking to people, to have the confidence to go up and introduce yourself to people or whatever. That's what you want to do is stay in that parasympathetic mindset so that your true underlying personality come, can be allowed to come out and shine. Yeah, the the interesting thing is, is when I've told people that I come here for network treatments, they have questions, of course. And apart from what it's done for me physically, and, and it, there really is a grounding, very, very clear sense that you get from it. You, you definitely feel present um, and, you know, things that maybe were repressed do come up. Um, but the best way that I can equate it to somebody who has never experienced it is the, it's the sitting in the corner of a, of a chaotic room and being unaffected by all the chaos. Exactly. Yes. Because when you're in that fight or flight mode, you're sitting in that chaos and right. your brain is going here, 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 here. And all of a sudden, after a little bit of work, your brain is able to step back and see that big picture. And you see the chaos, but you're not drawn into it. Mm -hmm. You're able to step back and see the big picture for what it really is. And it is so different when you're able to bring that brain down into level. Yeah, there really is. I mean, there's a lot of truth to that. And I mean, I personally, I, you know, have bouts with my anxiety and, you know, it's just the times that we're living in. And if I'm regular about my treatments and I'm not always that way, but when I'm regular about my treatments, you know, things I can think with some context in more complex ways, think my way through problems, remain calm, remain centered. That's one thing I think men really get a lot from it is, is that sense of centeredness. Um, and going back a little bit. So the reason the body's naturally set up to heal itself. And when those subluxations happen, essentially they've lost their connection to areas of your body, whether it's your organs or, or your arm or, or whatever is, do I have that right? Well, basically what happens is that when you have all of that stress and tension in the body, the brain gets to a point where it says, you know what? I have too many other things I have to deal with. So it literally just decides to stop paying attention to that body, which then allows more and more stress to build up because the body doesn't feel it. And so it becomes an issue that, you know, your brain just literally doesn't even, isn't even aware of stuff. The technical term is called alexithymia, the inability for your brain to perceive part of your body. And so with network, what we do is we bring the brain back in contact because once it starts to feel that tension, it wants to get rid of it, you know, but it's kind of like if, I don't know if you have 10 year old kid or not at home, but if you do think about what their bedroom looks like, you know, usually it's a disaster area. Tell that kid if they want to go outside and play, they got to clean up their room. If you stand outside that door, that kid, you will hear nothing but movement around there. Right. But you open up that door 10 minutes later it's still going to be a disaster because when that kid left their room to come ask you if they could go out, they weren't living in a disaster area. They were stepping over clothes, walking past an unmade bed, disastrous desk, but they didn't see it anymore. It was just their bedroom. So when you said, just get your room clean, the kid's running upstairs because, hey, how long did it be? I was just there, you know? The sound that you heard when they opened their door was their jaw hitting the floor because it's like, Holy crap, where did all this come from? They're seeing their bedroom through different eyes right now because it's got to get cleaned up. And so when they, you know, are in their cleaning, their brain is so overwhelmed with everything that has to be done that they're moving stuff around, but it's not getting anywhere because their brain can't see the big picture. Mm -hmm. Now, if you tell that kid, okay, listen, clean off your bed and come get me. You know, how easy is that? Because I was that kid. So, you know, you pull up the sheet, pull up bedspread, you know, throw the dirty clothes on the floor, 
Bedroom's done. No big deal. All right, let's clean up the floor. This time we get all our dirty clothes in a pile and we're going to get them into the hamper. Everything that goes in the dresser, we'll get it on the dresser. Everything that goes, <coughs> excuse me, on the desk, we'll get it on the desk. But now you bring back the parent and it's like the floor's clean, the bed's clean. Wow, that's amazing progress. I've only been working five minutes and I can't believe how much progress I've made. And so a few minutes cleaning the desk, a few minutes cleaning the dresser, job's done. Now, can't do that one time and expect the kid to do have the clean room for the rest of their life. But if you do that enough between the ages of 10 and 17, you can actually go see their dorm room in college and see the floor because they will have learned over that time to do that. That's exactly what my job is. When I get a patient in, I'm looking for, first of all, do you have a big mess in that spine of all this tension from different stresses? And if you do, <coughs> excuse me, and we do have an amazing computer system that can actually show this and track the progress as it goes along. But if we have this, then it's a matter of training the brain, not to find the whole thing, but to find one bit and then another bit and then another bit. And then pretty soon that stress just starts coming off. And the great thing about it is, is that your brain is learning stuff. So the next time that particular stress hits, your brain doesn't just file it away and try to ignore it. It says, oh, I know what to do with that one. And so you start maybe stretching a little bit or moving a little bit. If you're in a certain situation that's bringing you some stress and you realize that your breathing kind of starts to expand a little bit because you're trying to, you know, get rid of the stress. Whereas before it would just, the breathing would just slow down almost to a stop because it's like, listen, I just don't want to pay attention to this. But you're giving your body its own tools in order to get rid of the stress. And as we open up those nerves, that's what starts opening up the rest of the body. So the immune function starts to better. So your body starts to keep itself healthy and all that stuff. The endocrine system is a huge system that the nervous system is. So if you're having problems with you know, male hormones or things like that, you know, by just getting the nervous system unbound up and allowing that nervous system to get there, you, you have more energy to work out. You have more desire to work out. All of those things start coming into play because one of the best things that you can do to soothe that brain, to soothe that nervous system is motion. You know, you've got to be active, but you don't want to be active if you're all stressed out because your body just isn't in that state. Yeah, there's, it's more subtle. So where the, the, the standard or the traditional chiropractic is, is those, the cracking of the bones. And I think it's, it's that short term fix. Oh, I feel great. But I also have an appointment in a couple of weeks and I haven't really changed anything, the underlying issues. Um, and this is more subtle. So it's a, it's a more long term play. Well, basically what it is, is, you know, we're training your body to fix itself. And so I'm not just doing something to you that, you know, as long as it holds great and as soon as it's done, you know, come on back and we'll do it again. Mm -hmm. It's we are training your brain to start finding this stuff and start moving itself to get yourself out of that problem. So, yes, the the contacts are much lighter. There's no you know, wicked twisting or anything like that, because that's not what we're about. We're not trying to, you know, move bones. We're trying to take tension off of the system. And as that tension comes off, that's what opens up the nerves. So it's still chiropractic because we're trying to get those nerves to open up. It's just, you know, we're not having to physically force bones out of place in order to do that. Yeah. Yeah. So can you explain a little bit, you touched on, you said brief touches. Um, can you, I mean, I'm familiar with it, but those that are that are new to it, can you can you share like what the I'll run through of a of a normal uh, practice or a normal, a normal session, visit? Yeah. Normal visit. So basically, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a patient lay face down on a table, and I'm going to do some checks to find out where is that system bound up today because. Today's story is going to be different than every other visit they've ever had. Because since I, even if I just them the day before, new things have entered their life. You know, whether it's at work, at home, maybe somebody cut them off in traffic, they've got different stresses. And so I analyze, okay, what is the big one, the easiest one to find, the clean off the bed one, the, the one that they can grab on the most. And so then I make a very light, gentle contact, trying to get the brain to find that area. 
And if it does, I can see shifts in the breathing. I can see the body starting to unwind that stress. And so it's, it's not a physical, it's not a huge thing. It's a very light force, but the effects of it go so much deeper and so much, you know, into how you feel as a person, how your brain is doing, um, you know, like for instance, um, yesterday I had a patient that had a major headache coming into the office. You know, it was a, she called it an out of 10. Now she had been to the emergency two times that week. So Monday wow. and Wednesday, she went to the emergency room trying to get rid of this headache, could not do it. It was horrendous. I mean, they had her on some major drugs, whatever, nothing was touching it. And so she came into the office 25 minutes later, she leaves and it's completely gone. All right. It was because what they were doing was they were not finding that it was stress that was causing the body to stop the flow of blood up to the brain the way it should. There was just so much tension in the body. All they were doing is saying, oh, you've got headache pain. Take this medication or take this medication to cover that up, to stop that pain from being felt which completely just added more chemical stress to the patient. And so when we worked with her, we were able to release some of that stress. We could see immediately after I, three or four minutes, her breathing just started to change. And she wasn't trying to change. It just started to change. And all of a sudden, you could just see her sink into the table. And a few minutes later, it was like, oh, my gosh, it's about a three out of ten right now. And then a little bit later, I can't feel it anymore. That's unreal. You know, because it's all about the body needing to fix itself, but unable to because all of that stress and tension is locked up, keeping those nerves from doing what they need to do. When I'm here, you know, you said you, you know, you lay down and then you, you always check my feet. And then you, you mentioned these, these, these points or these touches. Mm -hmm. There's a, seems to me like there's a natural communication system that you're following or that you're looking for or that, you know, like some kind of channel, like where are these touches at and, and, and explain that a little bit. Well, that gets to be pretty, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the brain to start finding stuff that it decided a little while ago, listen, too much going on. I got to ignore this right now. Um, and so that's where it becomes to be very subtle because you, know, you have to pick up and find where this is. You know, the leg checks and everything like that, that's what we use to figure out, okay, where is the big bulk of tension? Okay, gotcha. And then we look for, okay, how can I get the brain to find that little bit? So it's not like sending the kid into the room to clean it and just expecting it to be done, but saying, okay, no, go just clean off that bed and come get me. You know, just putting it into a... a a place where the brain can start finding not the whole thing because it can't fix it all. Mm -hmm. You know, it, there's so much that has gone on in that person's life that they literally have shut down. And we all have our stories. Everybody's got their amount of stress. You know, we see it in grade school kids. And this is the big problem. If you've got a kid that's got ADHD or sensory issues or all that stuff, those kids are suffering from stress. You know, all different kinds of stresses have added up. They're in that sympathetic overdrive mode. So that's why the kid can't sit st still in school because all their blood is in their extremities. You know, they're hopping around, moving around because the, literally their blood is there. They can't calm their brain down to get into that parasympathetic that, you know, let me take in the whole action their brain is racing, trying to find the modes of escape, trying to find that weapon. You know, it's just going from thought to thought to thought. And so, you know, that poor kid is sitting there. And, you know, what is the uh, thing that most people do is they put their kids on these drugs, you know, which is just another form of cocaine, you know, literally is. And so now we're not fixing that problem because as soon as you take the kid off the drugs, the problem's still there. All we're doing is stopping the kid from acting that way so that the teacher doesn't get so mad at you at the parent-teacher conference. But are they learning anything more? No. You know, their brain isn't out of that sympathetic mode where it can start taking stuff in. It's still in that sympathetic mode. So they're just a better, they're a better classmate, but they're not a better student. Mm -hmm. 
Whereas if we can go in and get that stress off of that kid, all of a sudden, now we're out of that sympathetic back into the parasympathetic so they they don't have all that blood in their extremities they can sit down and relax you know when they go to bed at night they can actually go to sleep which is another big reason for some of these symptoms that we're trying to label as ADHD is because kids not getting any sleep you know if they might get to bed by eight o'clock but they don't go to sleep until 10 11 you know how are you supposed to get up at seven in the morning or 6 30 or whatever after that much time at that age, you know, no wonder the kid is going crazy and stuff like that. So, you know, that's, that's where all this stuff comes down to. And so with this work, we can help so many different things that all have their own different labels. So, you know, anxiety, depression, OCD, you know, all of these things are just different symptoms that show up in a person where that sympathetic overdrive mentality has basically taken over. And by removing that, all of a sudden the brain can relax. And do what it's supposed to, and what it's designed to. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, you know, getting getting the, the young kids on those drugs, there's chemical stress right there. Huge chemical stress. Then probably, you know, they're, I'm making an assumption that their diet, maybe not, that's probably a factor. It depends on the kid, right? Yeah. You know, the, the family, yeah. you know, so, uh, I would say a lot of the kids, you know, probably 50, 60% of the kids that come in to be with ADHD or sensory issues have already had the gluten removed. They've removed the dairy. They've re stopped do doing the red dye, you know, all that basic stuff that a lot of people, you know, will pick up on the internet just from any kind of search. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, the problem is still there. So yes, chemical stress was part of it, but it wasn't all of it. And we have to go in and get rid of more of it. Yep. But you're right. For a lot of kids, you know, the chemical stress can be one of those big factors that's pushing them over the edge because maybe the parents don't realize that gluten can be a big factor in some kids or that milk might be a huge allergy. And just because it doesn't show up on some blood test doesn't mean it's not affecting that kid and their ability to function in school or function as a kid. Yeah. The, the thing that I've heard a few times is that when they get a little bit older and they start to understand that they're on medication that maybe their friends aren't taking, that, you know, they're different. So, you know, they're, they're taking the, the, the drugs. So they're, they're taking, so they're getting the chemical stress. Um, you know, maybe a diet's a, a factor, but when they find out that they may be, you know, on meds and their, and their friends at school aren't, um, you know, there's a repression that's had, that, that's been going on and not dealt with. That's what we're talking about here. So the, these drugs are meant to suppress and not actually deal with, and those dogs got to get out. I mean, I've done a show about emotional health for men and it's, it's the same thing. Like those dogs have to get out. And if you continue to repress, there's your physical and emotional stress or your emotional, mental, emotional. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's huge. Um, and the Unfortunate thing is more and more kids are being forced onto these drugs. Mm. So it's not going to be that they're uncommon anymore. It's going to be that, oh, yeah, I'm just like everybody else. Unfortunately, you know, because, you know, teachers are getting to the point where it's like, hey, that student's a problem. I'll just, you know, get them on the ADHD medication. You right. know? And, you know, a lot of parents don't necessarily see that as a big deal because so many kids are on that. Oh, maybe my kid needs it. If it's better for them, I need to do that for them. You know, and out of love, they consider that very, like a very important thing. Like, yeah, maybe I need to get my kid on these drugs. Mm -hmm. But nobody is asking the question, how is this helping my kid long term? You know, everybody's saying, okay, what can I do today? And these kids are only kids. And let's face it, you know, when you're a child, you know, the, you know, the first eight, 10, 12 years of life, that's huge in the amount of growth, both mentally and physically. And if you allow that kid to stay in that fight or flight mode, they are not going to grow emotionally as well as they should. They're not going to grow physically as well as they should, because you can't be in growth and in stressed state at the same time. You've got one or the other. And so if you want your kid to grow, you've got to get them out of that state. So if you see an eight-year-old who has the emotions of a six or a four-year-old, boom, you know, wow, there's something that needs to be addressed. And just covering it up medication-wise is not going to do it. I watched a, a documentary this week on Netflix. It's a new one. 
Goop? Yes. Yes. And they talk about, you know, what we've been addressing here, uh, but they put a, a kind of a woo-woo around it about the, the, at least that's the impression that I got. These energy fields being two to six feet off the body. I wanted to get your take on it because the whole time I was watching, I'm like, I wonder what Dr. Jack thinks of all this. I'll let you take the floor. So what, what do you think? You've okay. seen it clearly. Yeah. So, so here's the deal is when you get into high level network care, because there are levels. Yes, yeah. there are different levels. Yeah. That is exactly what this guy is doing. This guy um, was started network 20 years ago, kind of around the time I did. He was maybe a little bit before. Um, but being out in Southern California, you know, a different mindset. People are open to this stuff, whatever. Sure. You know, he can really get some really weird stuff happening in his patients because you can, you know, really accomplish some of this stuff. And, you know, I'm at that level. So if I go to these seminars and I get adjusted by some of these doctors that know what they're doing, it's like my body will do the same stuff. Really? You've had that oh, yeah. same? Oh, okay. Oh, wow. yeah. yeah. Okay. Because all it is is a release of that energy that's stuck in there. Yeah, yeah. You know, and, you know, if, if the more you are in it, the, the more your body gets attached to it and the more you can get to that point where you can release it when it needs to get released. That's a different level. You know, here in the Midwest, you know, talking about energy fields, five feet off the body and whatever, yep. you know, there's obviously some people that are very excited about that and like, oh, I want part of that, but that's not the majority. We're much more conservative here. Yep. And so, you know, that's where my practice is geared toward. It's, it's talking and communicating to the people that I serve. You know, if, if somebody like I've got some patients, um, couple from New York, uh, a couple from LA that are more into those higher levels because they've been going to network care doctors for, you know, 15, 20 years. And they come to live in Omaha or I've got one that lives in Lincoln. She drives, you know, once or twice a week to come, come here. Um, it's, you can, you can have fun with that and you can get them to that level. But, you know, the average Midwestern mentality is much more, okay, you know, What's going on here? What can you do for me? And so that's why I gear my information to the to the way that you can understand it because it's what it comes down to is this overstressed state. And there is just so many ways that we are getting stress in our lives these days that so many of us are getting into that parasympathetic overdrive mode. And it affects the way you think, it affects the way you act basically affects who you are when it comes down to it. And I haven't looked in a while, but you are the only one in Nebraska offering this. Of Yes. Um, the, there's a couple doctors who have taken the beginning courses, but, you know, they, as far as the advanced courses go and things like that, you know, um, unfortunately, and I wish that weren't true. You know, I would love for a couple more doctors to be around to do this stuff. Cause the more of us that are around, the more the awareness is going to be, and we can actually work on each other. In fact, uh, years ago, I sent out a, uh, a letter to every chiropractor in Omaha saying, Hey, there's a seminar this weekend in Denver, go down to it. And it's just, it, it's tough because in order to do this work, the certification levels are quite, tedious. And I was in a point in my life where I had the time when I did it, you know, um, and I could, I could take the time it, it needed to, to do that. And that was just this gift that I had in my life. Um, right now, I don't think I could do it. I don't think I would have the time to go to all the classes I would need to go to. Uh, I might be able to go to the beginning one, but you know, that doesn't really touch on how to really get and help to the fullest extent these kids or the adults who are sitting in here and are having these symptoms. It does, it does really make a, an impact. I mean, I can definitely tell, and I'm not always faithful about coming all the time, but, um, I'm always grateful that I, that I, I am that decision. Yeah. yeah it's, it, it does make a, a big the, difference. And the nice thing about it is if you do take a couple weeks off, it's not like you have to go five or six times to get back to where you were, you know, within a visit, because, it's all about training the body. You know, your body might have gotten stressed to the point where it went back into that old mode of, okay, I'm going to just forget about stuff and protect it. But within a visit or two, 
your body will remember exactly what it needs to do and it will get to it. Um, so it's, it's, it's a nice modality because you don't have to worry about, you know, the patient, Oh, you've been gone for three months. Well, you know, let's set back in. We got a good month of work to do. And it's not like that at all. You know, within a couple of visits, they're back to where they were because they didn't lose any of the knowledge. Their body knows how to do it. It just got so stressed that it, said, you know what? I, I, yeah. I can't go there right now. Yeah. It's only like a certain amount of resources and it's like, gotta yeah, divvy them out. Um, uh, I want to shift gears just a little bit because when I've came in here a few times, we've talked about, uh, men and their, uh, you know, their attention to the endocrine system, their hormone levels, testosterone, uh, being the, the big one. And I know you're not an endocrinologist, but you have some really good feedback. And I thought that Um, it would be helpful for the listeners. So there's so many places, you know, the commercials, the GNCs, the complete nutritions, you know, there's pills, patches, gels, there's lab work, there's all this stuff out there. And it's, it's easy for guys to get going the wrong direction. Um, I wanted to find out from you, you know, get your thoughts on it. And if people are either interested or curious what they should do, what's the right thing to do, the smart thing to do? You know, um, unfortunately, there is, uh, there's a lot of places that I would not go to in Omaha um, because nobody's thinking about bioidentical. They're just stubbing stuff down you. Um, they're all just trying to make sure that they can give you something that you can pay for each month and whatever. Um, and you really do have to find somebody that has done more than just a cursory study that just knows how to advertise really well. Um, so, you know, getting to somebody that will use bioidentical, that that's going to be the key, you know, and I don't know necessarily where you'd go to. I haven't done that kind of study about it. Um, there are, there are tests that you can do that will let you know what you need, but then you have to find a physician that's willing to write the prescription so that you can get the hormone um, made properly because it's not something you want to just go to a shelf and get. You know, you want to make sure that it is made for you and your body. Um, so that's the big thing is when you're doing your research, make sure they're tailoring it just to you and not just, Oh yes, we're going to tailor it to you, but we're going to use the same thing we're giving everybody else. Yeah. There's a lot of places I think that they'll, they'll they'll set the appointment. They'll, they'll take your service. Like they'll take your money, not take your money, but they'll, they'll take your business. Mm -hmm. Um, happily that seems to be a little bit different experience than the bioidentical. So, and that's not offered at all those places. So you're suggesting that that's what men should be looking for is, labs that do bioidentical or that at least offer that, right? Hey, that's what you want to look for, you okay. know, is somebody that can do that. <clears throat> There's lots of different ways to administer the hormone. Um, the people that I really look up to use what's something that's called a trochee, which is um, they embed the stuff in a little wax and it's something that you kind of put on your um, gums and yep. it just kind of sits there and just the, the, the substance is absorbed through the uh, skin, you know, like in your mouth. Um, but that's not necessarily the only way to do it. Um, you know, there's, you just got to find, you got to find a doctor that you trust um, and, and that has been doing it and make sure that you've, you've got some good um, uh, reviews on, the doctor. I yeah. just, I just can't give you any better because it's just, it's, it's a tough thing to do in this city right now is to find somebody like that. So, yeah. And, and we have people that for, from here and also online too. So, I mean, the, you know, the, the point that I think we're making here is that there's just, there's a lot out there and a little bit of research will take you really far. Exactly. Yeah. You got to do your research. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. So, um, when should last few questions here? When should men start to take action on something like this? Like what? What, sh, what are they going to notice? What are, What are the symptoms? When should they start to be concerned? What it comes down to is what level of performance do you want to be at? 
that's what it comes down to is so I know I have a patients that come in here because they are tennis players or golfers and we can actually take their game to the next level because again, getting the brain in contact with the body, they can literally that tennis ball becomes bigger. They're able to calm their brain down in between golf strokes, like to the point they never could before. So this type of work you know, you can use sports as a way of saying, okay, you know, it, it, would I like to get better at this sport? Is that something that's really driving me? If you have confidence issues, then coming in to get an exam just to see if maybe your system is overload, that might be the reason why you're not where you want to be in that respect. So it all depends on what you want to use as your baseline, what you want to look for uh, as a po- to, to what you want to, to the degree you want to improve. Okay. Yeah. The um, interesting thing is that that's going to be different for, for everybody, of course. Um, and going back to your thing on confidence, the, the more that I come in and, and, and stay regular with my visits and, and we're, you know, trying to find and work the stress out that's, that I'm locking up, I find that I'm a lot more, I mentioned grounded earlier, but more certain. I have more certainty. That's because your brain's able to focus, right? Right, yeah. You know, that, that ability to be able to step back and see that big picture rather than reacting. Yeah. Because that sympathetic, you're always reacting. And how can you be confident about a reaction? Yeah. Whereas if you are in that mindset of sitting back and seeing the big picture, you're able to be a lot more confident about what you're doing, what you're saying, you know, everything like that. And between the two, you know, that's something women gravitate to more grounded, more, more certain men. Absolutely. That's just, that's just how it goes. Yeah. That's part of it. Absolutely. Somebody who can maintain their composure when stress, because life happens, right? Yeah. It's huge. All right. So, uh, last few questions here. Uh, where can my listeners go to learn more about you if they want to book a visit? Um, you know, can, is there, can we offer them like a, a discount or, or something special for, for people who, who found out about your business here? So if you are interested in learning a little bit more about us, um, livehealthyomaha.com is our website and it gives you all different, you know, t- types of problems that you kind of click on and get a little more information. Um, but for your listeners, if anybody wants to come in and get that exam that we're talking about, it's a computerized exam. It's three different tests, tells you so much more about it. We're also, before that, we're going to go and do a comprehensive history to find out, you know, do you have a history of the different stresses that might be, so that way we can apply that knowledge to what your graphs look like. So our normal cost for that visit is $150. We will do that for $47 as long as you mentioned that you heard about us on the podcast here. Oh, that's awesome. That's huge. So it's normally $150 and you're doing it for 47. That's incredible. So make sure you mention that you heard, heard about Jack and what they do here um, on the man core podcast. Last two questions. And uh, then I'll let you go. Cause I know this is your day off. <laughs> um, what is your definition for good health for men? I think the big definition is you want to make sure that you're eating a proper diet. And I don't mean every single meal, you know, six days a week, you should be really good. If you want to take a day off and just kind of go a little crazy, whatever, that's fine. Um, You want to make sure that you're doing exercise. You know, exercise is so important, not only for the body, but for the brain. You've got to keep that movement going in there. And you want to make sure you, you, tailor your exercise to your age. So you don't want to be necessarily running 25 miles if you're, you know, in your fifties or sixties, you know, cause that's way too much pressure on the joints. Um, you know, even in your late forties, you know, you really got to watch that stuff. Um, but you know, staying active, you know, keeping that body healthy, you know, those are the main things that you want to do. And, um, another thing that is really important is journaling. You know, taking that 10 minutes in the morning before you start your day just to put pen to paper, talk about what you got to do today. You know, it is so huge because now you're taking something in the etherical, in your thoughts, and putting it into the physical. Your brain sees it, thinks about it differently. That's incredible. 
Yeah, that, that that way it's not bouncing around all over like, you know. Exactly. A hamster wheel. That's right. Last question. This is the one that, that I always enjoy the most, but um, what do you want to be remembered for? I think if I could have an impact on people's lives, in other words, wow, I'm a different person you know, I'm able to accomplish more. I'm able, because I'm only one guy. I can only accomplish so much. But the more people that I can affect to bring them to a higher level of accomplishment, that will impact not only the world that I live in, but the world that my kids and their grand, my grandkids will live in. Um, it's all about, you know, everybody doing their part to make the world better. That's so awesome, man. I really appreciate your time today. All right. Thanks so much for listening to the episode with Dr. Jack here at the Main Corps. Take care. Be well. Thanks for listening.